Back in 2009, your stepfather was shot and killed in Dearborn, Michigan. Yes. And it was a sting by the FBI. Yes. Because he was a radical Muslim, right? Yes. And that's what they. That's what they said. Do you support Sharia law? Well, yeah. Sh Sharia law is uh, it's the same laws of morality and integrity. So it wasn't. And so are you a being law. honest with me right now? Of one thousand percent. Welcome to the Fall of State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. So I have with me today Omar Regan. He is a director, an actor, and a comedian. Thank you for coming. Hey, man, thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it so <laughs> much. I, I, hey, I like what you're doing. Hey, look at you, man. You get your own studios. Man. You know something? Pretty, yeah, I'm proud of you. Black on the outside, white on the inside. Hey, whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> So what got you interested in becoming an actor and entertainer and all that? I didn't, like, I grew up, um, it's like, um, in a religious household, very firm, strong religious household. So right. we were mostly sheltered from the outside world. And so I had to entertain myself. Like, you know, my father was like, only watch things where you can learn something from. Right. You know, things that you can learn good manners and good behavior. Otherwise, don't watch. So we don't watch it. So we watched a lot of kung fu movies, martial art movies, you know, uh, that had self-discipline, lessons of self-discipline and morals. And, and so I started imitating with my brothers and sisters. We started imitating the kung fu movies, yeah. and that got me into acting. That, that's what, but I didn't know that's what I wanted to do until there was an audition available um, and then I auditioned and I was like, this is it in yeah. Detroit. Because it wasn't a lot of auditions in Detroit. So I read that you grew up in Michigan. Yes. And uh, you grew up a Muslim. Yes. Are you still a Muslim? Yes. And well, quote unquote. Who does that mean? That means that I'm not, I don't like labels of religion because I believe that religion is like man-made um, system of rules. And I believe that the labels that we all have is what's dividing us. And so the, I'm going back to the actual meaning of what must the, it's an Arabic word. What does it mean? It means a peaceful person. Were you a Christian before you became a Muslim or were you always a Muslim? My mother was. A Christian? Yes. And then she met this man because your father left or something, right? My father, yeah. What was I found out later was my biological father uh, was he told me he would he liked to go back and forth to school, which was prison. <laughs> so he said, oh. I wanted the things that I want. I was young and my mother didn't know either that what happened to him. He kind of just disappeared, you know, and he would that was he said those was my issues that he was I would, in and out of I prison. Would, he was in and out. Oh. And my mother, she was going from church to church. Right. And so then she was trying to find her own way. She became Muslim before she met um, my father. So I have my biological father now. So, I, so your mother was a Christian. Yes. She met your biological father. They met you. Was he a Christian? Yes. Okay. But he was in and out of jail, so she went looking for something. And, and going to church, she didn't find it. Right. And so she went to a Muslim church. Am I right? She went to, um, she moved into a neighborhood in Highland Park, Michigan. Right. And she started seeing them. So the pastor yeah. told her, because she said, every time I go to church, I'm like, she's young. She said, I, I'm just not, I don't know what it is. I'm looking for the, I'm looking for something, you know, to touch my spirit. And so then the, the, the pastor told her, said that just keep praying to God for guidance and keep going, just keep going. And so then when she moved over into this neighborhood, she saw all of these Muslims and she was like, I wonder what is it about them? What do they do? <laughs> yeah. Right. And um, they were uh, and she, they were a lot of black people. And so they had businesses and they had their own school and their own. So she was like, oh, they look like they, they they look like they take care of business. So she went to ask questions. And when she did, she she liked it. She said she didn't find it too much different from Christianity far as. Um, back then, we wasn't using the words morals, but she said all of the the the, the rules was the same. You yeah. know, love each other, be kind to each other. She she was like, oh, I like that. And so then that's when she started hanging, and she became a Muslim and started hanging around the Muslims. And I was 
four and a half, five years old. Yeah, five, I read that. Was your, so your father and mother never married? They didn't marry. Oh, okay. Yes. And then she meet this Muslim man. Yes. And he became your step. She married him, and he became your stepfather. Yes. That's he was a new convert also. Oh yeah. Because he was also so. It's so amazing this story. Um, is because he was searching, also. Like he said, he had been in the army. He, you know, he had a bachelor's in music, and he was like, man, this something is wrong like and he was looking for himself where he wanted to connect at the same time and he ended up in this at the same place amazing <laughs> right and then yeah. they started talking to each after some time um they started talking to each other oh i see and yeah oh, okay mm -hmm. how did he treat you while growing up oh man he it was uh i'm so grateful for him as a father he was strict in the ruling but not as loving he just it was just i mean to be honest to this day that guy is my hero man he's not with us anymore um but he's a he's amazing he's just a, a, yeah what do you mean not as strict and loving i mean not I mean, as loving like strict far as God said, don't do it, don't we not doing this. Like, you need to be reading and writing. You need to, like, I wanted to play and have so much more fun, but he's like, you need to be learning business. You need to learn how to count. You need, you know, uh, so, and you need to stay in shape. What are you doing? Like, so he didn't have so, any love, though. He was just straight with the Muslim thing. No, there was, that was the, he had all, the, that was his love. Oh, that's what he called, he thought was love. Yeah, he oh. was, it was, um, it was really, truly amazing. And uh, he wasn't like a big hugger, but he was affectionate. Like he would always make sure that he would give you affection. Oh, I see. You know, yeah, so. And so did he have more kids with your mother? Yes. How many did they have? Man, it's 10. Whoa. I know. Hi, what's your line? Amazing. amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. And so were you close to your natural father? No, because I didn't know him. Really? I didn't know him. I, we didn't know what happened to him. That guy, he totally disappeared for, wow, I would say I just got a hold of him or he just got a hold of me um, just this year. That's amazing. It is amazing. April of 2020. Are you glad to hear from him? I am. I'm happy yeah. to hear from him. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. And I understand. Right. You know, I mean, you know, when you live life and you understand, you don't walk around with all of this negative energy inside of you. Life happens. So. So now that he's in, in touch with you, do you feel like this is my father and you're happy to see him? I'm happy to see him. And I know that this is my biological father. I'm I'm like, so I don't have any resistance, you know, oh, but we got to build the relationship because I don't really know him. I would like to know what he likes. Like when I think about him, I know what he likes, but I know that I know everything about my stepfather. Right. You know what right. I mean? So I just have to build that. But the coronavirus and the pandemic. And so then we haven't officially came together because when uh, he contacted me on Facebook, I hadn't seen that message because I don't be checking my Facebook messages. I'm sorry. Yeah. I um, for mean. months. And so then finally I was like, what? Check that out. It's nice. You got married, I read. You were married once. Yes. And then while married to one woman, you married another one. I did. You got married at 19? 17. Got married at 19 with the first woman. 17 with the first one. And then 19 with the second one. Yes. Well, that's because you were a Muslim? That, partially. We, we, blamed, we, we blamed it on being Muslim, you and right? <laughs> so, so that we can excuse... Like what I find that a lot of people do religiously, you know, because we weren't legally married. Um, so like you weren't legally married to either one of the women. Right. So did they both live in the same home with you? No. They so, each had their own homes, um, each had their own environments, their own. And did thing. they know you were involved with both of them? Yes. Really? Yes. So you were like go and be with one and then hey, good night, I'm going to be with Sally. Huh? Yes, I mean, pre pretty much. But you were legally married to either one, right? No. Under the Muslim law, were you legally married? Under under legal Muslim law, yes. Oh, I see. Like it's like if you're at the church, the community recognizes that this is your spouse, and that you have more than one, and that you have more than one. So then the community is holding you responsible for caring for them if you take on this responsibility. So the the rule is. 
If you want to have more women, you got to make sure that you honor and take care of them mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially, and, uh, and sexually, of course. So if, you, if you're doing that, then you're going to be successful. If you're not, then the whole community, they, they, you know, they're like, hey, what's going on? You know, like, they she's not happy. Yeah. Oh. She's not happy. They, you know, somebody has to hold you accountable for you adopting to live this lifestyle to care for more than one woman at a time publicly. Why did you think you wanted more than one? You know, it was happening all around me. And so, I mean, I was indoctrinated with the idea of more, you know, I mean, like with, I was actually, I was indoctrinated with the, you could do this under the laws of God, but really myself, you know, not even blaming anything on that. Like when I come to know, it was just because I wanted more. It was like, yeah. Ooh, is, is she's cute. <laughs> oh, and then she's cute. And yeah. if they say that I can have it, yay, that's, that's telling the truth. How many children do you have? I have six children. Whoa. I know. I have three younger children and three older children. So from those marriage, well, from those marriages, I have, uh, I got, man, 27-year-old? Do I look like I got a 27-year-old? No. Yeah. No, I got all. 26 and a 25-year-old. Wow. Yeah. And so how old are you? I'm 45. And so you have six children by these two different women? Yeah, well, three by those two different. I, I'm grateful I started over, like, in life. So my children now, they're four, nine, and 12. By, by a third by, woman? By, yes. Yeah. So that didn't work. How many work. wives did you get? That didn't work out. That I, was, I, I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, I was like, I woke up one day. As I was going after uh, my career, and I was like, man, this is, this is, this, I'm not able to do this. I didn't even want to do this. Meaning so, that you couldn't have a, you couldn't Yeah, do it. I didn't know. It's like, How many wives did you have at one time? Just two. Just two. Yeah. And you realize you could not handle two at one time? Yeah, it's a lot of responsibility, yeah. man. It's yeah. like, and people don't, they all, it's not like far as the, the rules behind it is, you really have to be caring and looking <laughs> and be present. It's not like with the idea that, oh, he got a girlfriend over there and he got a girlfriend over there. It's not the same. Like, this is, you're building, this is full on relationships that wow. you're building with individuals and the pressure is everybody knows about it <laughs> right <laughs> so it's like it, it, you had to, man it, it take it takes a lot i ran away I, was, I left detroit i was like i can't do it anymore so this was in, in this area what's the name of the area that you lived in uh, this was now in the west side of detroit oh okay yeah and so your two women knew about each other Yes. And so when you guys will meet up at church, you're like, hey, how y'all? Come on in, honey. Yeah, yes, yes. Really? Yes. They got along with one another? Uh, they, I would say they didn't get along, but they didn't fight. You know, they just, it was a respectful, how you doing? How you doing? Oh. You know I mean? All right, all right. And so by those two women, you have how many kids? That's the three children and my first as far as my first relationships go. So the first woman you were, you got three with her? No, like, I only have six total. Oh, so how many you so have with the two I got, women? I have, I have, my oldest son is 27. With the wife, with, with the first then, wife. And then my 26-year-old, and then with my, uh, the other wife, I have uh, one daughter. Oh, and so with this new woman you were, you have three kids? Yes. Oh, and are you married to her? Yes, but I didn't, I never, I, after that, after, I legally married afterwards, but then I didn't legally marry anymore. So I'm, I'm, right now, I'm not legally married. To the woman you were. Right. But you have three kids with her. Yes. Amazing. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> what a mess. So let me ask, these two women that you were with at the same time. Yes. Did you just run away or did you say bye or I can't handle this? Or well, no, did you, you just leave? You can't just leave them with, you know what, what happened with me? Yeah. Uh, because of all of this, <laughs> this frivolous lifestyle I wanted to live, I became a single father in Los Angeles with me and my three children. And so for four and a half years, it's just me and the kids. Oh. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah, but it was like I had no idea what women go through. It made me get on the phone and call and say, <laughs> hey, listen, I apologize.
Yes. To the first I two women. I apologize to you. All of the women that I ever met, that I ever talked to, oh. I was just calling women out of the blue. <laughs> that, uh, listen, you know, I, was, I apologize to you. I'm sorry. Because I, I didn't know the really the work that women actually go through. Like a, a woman's mind is so amazing because anything that she plans, it has to go around. If she has children, it goes around these children. And so being now that I'm in the father of just two children, I don't have any family members with me here in Los Angeles. And that I couldn't, I couldn't get certain jobs. I couldn't take certain classes. Like I, I yeah. had to make sure that my whole schedule was around these yeah. children. And then I had to make sure that I plan the meals. And then I know they got, I got to go to the schools. And I, I they got parent teachers meeting. And I, I was like, wow. And it, it was such an eye opener for me. It helped change any bit of. If I had any chauvinistic ideas in my mind or my head or <laughs> in my behavior, it changed all of it. So you sent them back? No, I kept them. I wanted to send them back, but they wouldn't leave. <laughs> so I was like, I told my daughter, I said, listen, um, I might have to send you home. And she was like, wow. I was like, baby, I'm only feeding you ramen noodles. And she looked at me and she said, what's wrong with the noodles? Amazing. And I was like, oh, it crushed me, man. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm committed. I'm, 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 I'm doing this. Like, you know, and that four and a half years later, man, it was, uh, it was beautiful that me and my children, they grew up with me, my older yeah. children, they grew up with me, and we have such a bond that's like. So they still here in LA? Yes. Well, one went back to Detroit because he wanted to be with his mom. He missed his mom. He's oh. 26. Oh, okay. You know. Uh, but yeah. The, How old is your daughter two, now? My daughter's 25. So let me guess something straight. So <laughs> you, <laughs> here you are Muslim, you have two women. Yes. What you call wives. Right. How did you tell them that I'm leaving, I don't want to do this anymore? Are you trying to do this, Jesse? What? Are you trying, are you, you want to do this? Okay. See, I'm giving you the blueprint. Okay, okay. let me tell you. So I <laughs> know. <laughs> no, I had to, I was like, who you leaving right now, Jesse? Who are you trying to leave? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I said, look, I went to them and was like, look, I'm not, I, I'm not ready. I'm just, I, I can't do this anymore. And they, they both was already, was grateful because they were like, we was tired of it anyway. They were tired like, of it They too. was tired of me because one, I uh, wasn't really, uh, I wasn't a bad husband. I've always been a nice guy, but it was just, you know, things wasn't progressing. Right. You know, and there was a lot of pain involved and they were making a lot of sacrifice at the same time. So were they you know, older or younger than you? Younger by a year. Oh, okay. Know, one by a year. And so they were OK years. with you leaving them. Well, we kind of parted. We were like because they were like frustrated with me. We were already kind of on the outs. Oh, OK. You know, like my son's mom was like she was really fed up with it. She left to stay to like I'm out she moved out but wasn't technically like splitting from me it was like a separation um and then she was just growing in a, in that whole area oh, with I her see. family and then the other one she was trying she was like she saw potential in me she was trying to hold on with me for a while and I just had to fess up and was like I just I just can't do this anymore so I we parted and then sometime I left Detroit so how did you end up with the kids? You say, hey, I want my kids? Yeah. So Is that I, a, a rule in the Muslim religion that the man should take the kids? No. That's a more cultural thing. It's not a rule in the um, Muslim religion. So how did you end up with the kids? The, the kids were coming, spending the summers with me. Oh, I see. And so then they was like, we don't want to go back. And I was like, I don't want to send you back because Detroit is a different climate. Right. So it was during that back and forth then, you know, I was like, they could stay. Oh, and then, I got so you. then they, she was like, well, do you want to try it for, do you want to try it? Yeah. And then I oh, talked I to you. the other mom, do you want to try it? And then, so they was like, we'll try to see. Because the kids, well, we want to stay, we want to stay, we don't want to come back. Right. And Good. so that, 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 it was really based upon the children and where the children said that they wanted to stay. And, and so, so you get to LA and you yeah. meet another woman. Is she a Muslim? Yeah, but this the woman is you're with now is a Muslim. Four and a half, maybe five years later. Is this how long you've been with her? No, now oh, we this got is when you met her. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, we. Is she a Muslim? Yeah, she's Muslim. And met her at the masjid, matter of fact. At the what? At the masjid, at the mosque. Oh, okay. Yes. So, like the women that you were with, are they married to? Are they with other men now? 
they went on to live their life. I don't know their personal life. Uh, do they normally, no. when men break up with women and move to religion, do those women get with other men and the men get with other women? Or well, I mean, it's just the same as everybody else. It's just, oh, I you see. know what I mean? If they meet somebody and they move on with their life, you know. Then, but I thought know. if women who already been with a man should get with another man in the Muslim world, isn't she stoned because she's slack? No. Oh. No, yeah, I never heard of this. Oh, you never heard that? No. Um, how does Allah U Arba feel about you leaving your woman? Oh, you mean like d does divorce? Yeah. Yeah, divorce, is, is like far as in the rules of God. Of that religion. Of, yeah, yeah, right. So divorce is uh, frowned upon or right. disliked, um, but it's permissible. So then now you have to, if you can part in kindness or if you can stay in kindness, the rule is kindness. Oh. That's the rule. So if you went back to that community today, they wouldn't stone you or anything for leaving the family? Yeah, there's no stoning. Oh, do yeah. they shoot you? Huh? They no. throw you off a building or something? No, there's no violence. <laughs> 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 and so this woman you're with now, she has three kids for you. Uh, yeah, this woman that I'm with now, we got a, we got a nice, a, a strong family uh, because my daughter is with us too. We all oh. building, yeah. So. Oh, okay, and three kids. And she right has here. a son. So, uh, you know, together we got m more than that, really. <laughs> How many women have you been with? Oh, man. You see, I can't count like Wilt Chamberlain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, my, I think I may have said um, one and a half. One hundred and a half? One and a half. One thousand? One and a half. What does that mean? i just throwing you off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 um, I've only been married, I would say now, I'm counting, what, four times? You've been married four, four times? Yes. And how many women have you been with? I didn't do too much of that stuff. Oh, you did not? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't do too much of it. I'm grateful for yeah. the, uh, you know, for the having some self-discipline, you know. Good, man. Yeah. And so are you expecting seven virgins when you go to heaven? Where, what? Seven no, virgins? I, I'm are not. you the, are you? Oh, I get what you're saying. Are the, you the, uh, uh, Lewis, are you the Lewis Farrakhan <laughs> kind of Muslim? No. Or, or the overseas I, kind of Muslim? No, I get what you're saying. You're talking the cultural, the, the cultural ideas of what's the um, propaganda and the, um, that they're putting out among the, um, uh, from the Middle East. Is that what you're saying? Oh, it's not like that. No, it's not. It's not even like that in Islam at all. But they do kill thinking that they're going to get seven virgins when they get to heaven, right? No, they don't. But I heard them say it. I, you heard people saying that, and I mean, they may not have been mentally balanced, but you didn't hear it actually from the word. Oh, it's I not. See. Yeah, you know, it's almost like people, it's like David Koresh. He kills people in the name of Christ, or he created his own cult, oh, and you know what I mean. And then people, they manipulate. They use words, and then they manipulate so that they can get away with. Or what's that guy named Jim Jones? Yes. And so then yeah, Jim Jones, he kills how many people? So un, in the in the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and it's, it's, you're it's gonna have that. Like that. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna have so, that. Why is it that in the Muslim religion you're allowed to have more than one woman at a time? What's the purpose of that? Well, it was never about it being in the Muslim religion. It was only people were doing it. It was like... Within that religion? No. People were like, it didn't, people were doing it and it was unregulated. It wasn't disciplined. Like there were, you heard of Anna and the King? You heard of oh. the, the, all of these people, these religious, quote unquote, religious people who have multiple wives and concubines. And oh, they was like, so it wasn't regulated. This was, this was happening already. This was not, this is not, Muslims didn't start. What's the difference between or, your religion and Louis Farrakhan? Is it the same? No, Louis Farrakhan, it's a, it's the same. He's more or less going under the name of Nation of Islam. He may have some, um, he follows the same. He's just some different other opinions. Do your set get along with his set? Yes. It, it may be some individuals that don't, but 
like, you know, maybe some, I don't know if you would meet some other Christians that you don't get along with right. or may not get along with you, but it's still based on the same understanding, you know, but maybe having some different opinions. Do your Muslim love the Jews? Well, yeah, every, the Muslims love everybody. Do they love the Jews? Yeah, there's no difference They don't see the Jews as their enemies, infidels? No. Have you ever been taught that while growing up, that uh, according to the Muslim religion, uh, Christians and Jews are infidels? No. You love the Christian too? Yes. Christians so and Jews, in, in the, even in the Quran, it doesn't tell you that. It only t talks about specific people that was going against God. But as a whole, no. So you were never taught that the Christians and Jews are infidels and worthy of death? No. So, because that doesn't go, it's not even in the, it's not in the Testaments at all. But I've read Christians it in the Jews. Quran before that Christians and Jews are infidels and worthy of death. And that you can befriend them, you can lie. No, it's teaching that, the Quran teaches that you can even lie. No. How do you feel about that? No. It said you can lie to them no, and deceive you, them. I, I understand. That. Yeah, I understand what you're saying about like, oh, the way that somebody may have translated to manipulate the words. But uh -uh. I'm grateful that my stepfather, right, he taught me how to read Arabic. He told me that people will always come and tell you stuff. He said, but you need to know this for yourself. Even in the Quran, it never mentions Christians and Jews. It says Christians no, wait, and watch Jews this. are infidels. Watch this. It never mentions Christians and Jews. It says the helpers. In the Arabic text, it literally says Nasara. Nasara was the, the helpers of Christ, and the Yahud, Yahud is the guided ones. It's come from a word Hadi. But when they translate things in English to come and maybe they have an agenda, people get confused and things are manipulated, and then there's a fight which is the reason why I was telling you from the beginning that I truly believe that all of these labels are there to divide us, which is the reason why when I come to talk to you, I'm like, hey, man, I'm proud of you. I feel your good energy because what you want to talk about is morality and you want to talk about decency. And I'm like, I'm with you because under the veil of uh, the label of a religion, People are doing everything to keep human beings apart when the truth of the matter is we are all in this together. So uh, in your religion, Muslim religion, do you see the Christian God and the, Jew, the Jewish God the same as the Allah God? Yeah, it's all one it's God. It's the same God. It's the same and God. And so Christians are going to heaven? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of Christians in heaven. And the Jews too? And there's going to be a lot of Jews. Really? In heaven, yeah. Do they know you feel this way? Yeah, you, I was there. I, I dare you to go in a mosque and say this. I said it, I mean, because sometimes they make me speak. So it's, there's Quran that actually says there are families that the people who believe in one God, because it's not about these labels. He says the ones who believe in, people who believe in one God who uh, 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 who aspire to be good, who enjoy the good things and stay away from the bad stuff, the right. evil. This is morality, what we're talking about. All of you guys are families of the same scripture. So This is what it says. So even though the Quran says Christians and Jews are infidels, worthy of death, you could befriend them, deceive them, lie to them, to get them, to entrap them. You're saying that that when it was translated, whoever translated put that in there, but that I wasn't. I've never there. read that at that all, was, even in the translation. Okay. I have never, I have never even read that in the translation. And if so, it is in there, is that? Are you saying that's a mistranslation? I would, yes, I would definitely say that because I've read the Quran. I mean, we have to read the we, we have to read the Quran of every year. I've read the Quran, and it. I have never read like what you're saying. I have never read that because it it definitely contradicts it contradicts all the other verses. It doesn't make sense. So it's almost like I was having this conversation 
with, the, um, with this guy who was like, oh, the Quran says you could beat your women, right? And I was like, no, it doesn't say that. And he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, we, well, he said he pulled up this verse, right? And I was like, oh, I know this verse. And so I'm saying the Arabic verse, Yadribu Hunna. And so he was like, okay. And so I said, look at this. I had to show him because I know he didn't know Arabic. The word Dharaba, right, yeah, is in the same chapter once again. And guess what it's translated as? What? Leave and go abroad. Oh, I see. So I was like, if you, and I said, now, let me tell you a story. When Muhammad came, this is in the story of Muhammad. Do you know what they were doing with women? They were burying their little girls alive as a custom, right? They were treating women as property. And so when Muhammad came and he made the announcement when he was anointed, if you will, and he says, these are the rules that God has given me that women are free. Women are like they're they're partners. They are not your subjects. They are not women can't be buried. Girls can't be buried alive. When he made all of that, it created a riff. And they were like trying to kill Muhammad because it went against the customs of the pagan Arabs. So at Muhammad the time. is the guy that started this religion. Muhammad is the guy that, that way came back with when, these right? rules. So is it true that Muhammad used to have a whole bunch of wives, including little girls? No, that's not true. That's not true either? No. How do you know that's not true? Well, how do you know it's not? Because neither one of us was there. But in, the, in what I was reading, in the authentic text of the story of Muhammad, not, I was like, wow, the guy was, it didn't make sense. So he wasn't a freak? Was, no, not from what I was reading. Really? Uh, and guess what? But you heard that about him, right? No, I heard those those scandals. Right. So I, but I tend to do my own research. Right. You know, and I've also been there. So what I do know is it's kind of hard for a freak or a scan uh, or, or a freak or <laughs> what, what are you call them? Uh, or or um, you had a lot of young girls. Not just a freak and, or what do you call them? A pedophile to gain a following of. One point million, especially it's more women Muslims than it is men. So but something is so there's a, so something is missing there. Right, it but over over the other countries, women Muslim women don't have any rights. You know they have to dress head to toe. They can't drive. They can't if they are. <laughs> you talk about Saudi Arabia. <laughs> if they're not a virgin, they if they're not a virgin, you can't marry them, uh, and all that stuff. Well, What's the difference between that do. Muslim religion yes. and yours? Well, the, the, what you're talking about has nothing to do with Muslim religion. What you're talking about has to do with different people's culture. So different people's culture and different backgrounds, and they may be Muslim, they're still living more culture than they are the rules of Islam. That has, that's, that's not even true because the women have rights everywhere. I, I've been to Saudi Arabia. And if you went there, you'd be like, oh, wow, this, this is not at all what he, I heard the scandals. I've been to Dubai. I've been to Muslim countries. I've been to Jordan. There's women without wearing hijab. There's women with hijab. They're, they're, they're just living like everybody else. It's, Are they allowed to drive in Arabia? Well, I don't know about them driving in Saudi Arabia um, because I just heard all of that new stuff. And so maybe they lifted the um, laws. But I know the story of the driving. Now watch this. I know the scandal, but the story. The story was the king said women shouldn't drive because he was honoring women. And the fact that treating every woman like a celebrity, he was making them have a male driver to take them wherever, wherever they want to go. And somebody came later and used it in a chauvinistic way. But the base of it, of where it come from, was it was something that he was doing as an honorable thing. And then so another person came into, you know, in charge or whatever, as we all see and have. Do other people know about this? I've rule. never heard this before. Yes, I other a lot people of know about it. Other people know about it, but the problem is that's not getting the noise. But I've interviewed a lot of Muslims of all, you know, different races, and yes. they don't seem to know about this. Well, I don't know if they've been there, because I've been no, there. they're from I've, there. I've, I've been there several times. But they're from there, too. They... They just come over here to visit. They live over there. Um, oh, well, who did you have? That's people. interesting. I would yeah. like to talk to them, Check too. Out, look on, on my channel. You'll see them. Okay, okay. So let me ask. Um, 
I'm glad I can bring something new because I, I, I mean, I'm like, yeah, dude, this is amazing. It's, but it's all history. Do, do you, as a Muslim, do you support homosexuality? I don't support the act. Is it wrong? I don't, I don't support the act of homosexuality as far as men and men um, are the, this, this here of their having sexual relationships how, with each other. How about other. women and women? Or, or, or women and women. Lesbians. Right. Or women and women. I believe in the, uh, in the order of life that God created life. In the scriptures, he says that he created a, uh, right. a male. Then he created a female as partners but to each other. But under your religion, to, is it considered evil? I mean, just the same as in, as in the Bible. How about uh, under your belief in religion? In the, is this considered it's just evil? inside of the Quran, all it tells us is it doesn't say that it's evil. It says that you are doing something that God didn't order, that, that, that God didn't or, or order to be happening. But do they call it evil? That's all they say. In the Quran, it doesn't call it evil. Did they change that? Because it is, it used to be in there that it was evil, and they would throw the homosexuals from the buildings. That's not the in the Quran. The buildings. I, think, I think what happens is, unfortunately, the... Are you like, You may be a Christian and think that you're moving. <laughs> Well, you know what my mother you said. You know, any of those things. You know what my mother said. My mother said when she became Muslim, it made her. She became such a better Christian, right? Uh, because when you start researching and studying, and not, it's too much propaganda and scandal. So what happens is you have to really do. And this is credit so to my stepfather. So are you saying that the Muslims accept homosexuality as a norm? No, I'm not do saying they see that they it as accept. An evil? homosexuality as a norm because they have to say exactly what God says. Right. That you're doing something that I didn't ordain. I didn't create this like this. Right. I created male for female and, and, and female for male as partnership. I didn't create uh, male and male. So he told Lot or Lut, Lot, he says, go and remind them uh, and offer your, here's how Muslims can't be homophobic uh, um, because he says, offer your daughters. This is in the Quran. Offer your daughters to them, to the males who were going after the males. So but in Islam, I don't know where. They just like offer the Muslim a, a pork sandwich, <laughs> Not, but, a pig sandwich. But but, but that's, that's how. Of, but me, that's me. the point that I was making to you. For it, we're the throwing off the building, all of that scandal stuff. It's not in the. But basis that is of, true. That is true overseas. I know for sure. No, uh -huh, because no. If, if you go to Saudi Arabia, no, no, there's no. a lot Not just of, Saudi Arabia. They're throwing the homosexuals off the building everywhere. But it has nothing to do with, it has, they're maybe homophobic. It has nothing to do with a religion or what God said or what Muhammad said. So, that, they'll be throwing them off the religion because of their own hate. We have to identify, like, the Quran tells us life is sacred. So let me just, so because of time, just, oh, okay, as sorry. a Muslim, do you see homosexuality as normal or abnormal? As a, as a, it's, it's abnormal. It's not, it's not natural. It wasn't the, na the nature not of God. Of, right. Okay. It's not, it's not of God. That's of man. And that's so, a great way of putting it. And so if a, a, if a Muslim were discovered to be a homosexual, what would happen to him? Well, I mean, nothing. I mean, that's his. Would they be rejected? His, no, that's his. That, those are his. His, between him and his creator, like, there's nobody here governing what you do with your sex life or so who, you he, who you choose to Muslim be So could a Muslim bring his, his homosexual lover to church? I don't to, believe... To the mosque? Yeah, no, I don't believe that he would do that, like, as <laughs> this is my lover, but, I mean, and then make it public. Like, I also believe that... There's a respect factor. If, the, if this was God's ordinance, and then as a human being, you choose to do your thing, that's your right. You, so you let me know, ask that's, this. As a Muslim... Right, but you don't have to as a promote Muslim, it is, is homosexuality evil? No, I can't say that homosexuality is evil because the is Quran doesn't wrong? tell us that it's evil. Is but it it's wrong? definitely not of God. Is, is it wrong? Yeah, it's wrong. It's not... How about you abortion? Don't do, this, do you this, support this, abortion? Abortion. Yeah, we've been taught do not kill children on the fear of sustenance or, you know, don't take life. The whole thing is about life. Don't, don't do that. 
Now you have all of these different, uh, Jesse, you got all of these different uh, loopholes that even among Muslims they talk about. Well, it's not life if it's not a full body. So then you have a discussion of people are saying, I didn't abort a child if I, uh, if I thought I might get pregnant and I, I took a pill or, you know, or if it wasn't at the stage when the soul is entered into it. You know, you have all of these different debates and discussions and you have a different rulings at the same time. If a woman is raped, uh, does she have, and she gets pregnant, does she have this? So all of those things come inside of a different discussion. Let but me ask you rule, about uh, Ilhan Omar. You know who she is? Ilhan Omar? Yeah. The I, congresswoman. I know the name. I haven't met her personally. Uh, what do you think about her? Well, I haven't met her personally, uh, but I mean, okay. I, I, don't, I don't know. I saw her doing works inside of her community online, but... I haven't met her personally to be able to speak on you her call, character. You start a, uh, started a, uh, an, uh, your own company, right? Yes. And did you name it uh, uh, Slaves of Allah? Oh, no. That was a rap, that was a rap <laughs> group back when I was uh, <laughs> a rap group 10, called Slaves 10, of 10, Allah. 10, 10 or 11 years old. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you, you guys name it that? Because we wanted to be servants of the creator, right, of God. And so knowing that Allah meant the God, one God, then we wanted to be like, that's the only thing that we will become a slave for. Oh. We're not a slave for anything else. Oh, I you got know. you. So that was the idea of, of picking that name back so, when we were young. So I read back in 2009, your stepfather was shot and killed in Dearborn, Michigan. Yes. And... Uh, and it was a uh, operation, a sting by the FBI. Yes. Because he was a radical Muslim, right? Yes. And that's what they. That's what they said. Those was those was. Um, that's what they said. The FBI said that he was the leader of a radical black Muslim group. Yes. And they were trying to impose the uh, Sharia law. Yeah. Uh, was that true about him no. in the United States? No, they no, and unfortunately too, we didn't have enough. Uh, media power back in, in uh, 2009 to be able to tell what really truly happened. It was just something easy for them to say to get away with the, the they, they really was criminal what they did. It was really bad. What happened? They Long had my, no, oh, I, I could try to sum it up in yeah. maybe. Uh, they, they, my father was doing a prison outreach and in the prison outreach, uh, they had the felons was coming home. And some of the felons were still doing criminal behaviors, right, in the neighborhoods. And so my father was on the roster. And my father told him, he said, you should be more scared of a law than you are the police. Because what you're doing is you rob your brothers and your sisters in the neighborhood. And then when the police come, you guys run and, and throw your guns down. He said, you guys don't make sense. You should be knowing that God is always watching you. Allah is always watching you. You shouldn't be bothering nobody. The police took the insert that he said that when the police come, this is in there in the, in the discovery, then you throw your guns down. And they said, oh, he's a radical. He's telling them to be violent against the police, which wasn't true. They just took the and manipulated it. So and he so, wasn't trying to impose uh, the Sharia law in the United States and across the United States? I mean, no, how? It's not even, and Sharia law is such a, um, do you know the word even Sharia means street? It literally you, means street. It's so not, he wasn't it's trying no, to do that? No, it's no such thing as like, oh, Sharia law is going to make a difference of change. It's not. Are you support, do you support Sharia law? Well, yeah, Sh Sharia law is uh, it's the same laws of morality and integrity. But should the Muslim be allowed to have, come to the United States and have their own law, Sharia law, as opposed to the American well, law? Well, no, because that's the same thing. The same laws that, that you have, it's almost nearly the same laws for humanity. It's the same laws in the thing. They just got a different name because it came from somewhere else. So it didn't make sense when my father was already, he had a license, he had, you know, a uh, building. He, he was already following the law of the land. So it wasn't so a you're being law. honest with me right now? Of 1,000%. Uh, if you were not, if you're not being honest, would you be okay with that too if you were lying to me? Well, well no, you can't. We got to tell the truth. In the Quran, it says, speak direct and to the point so that God, Allah will adjust your affairs for you. Do so. you uh, do you love white people? Well, I love yeah. White people are good people. You love white people? Yeah. Oh, 
And so, don't you love white people? Yeah. God created. But most white black people. people don't love white people. Why not? Because they hate them. They're jealous. They've been lied to about slavery and, oh. and systemic <laughs> racism this and all this, that. I think the whole mis uh, the misunderstanding that we're being manipulated because it yeah. don't matter. Wrong is wrong, no matter what color. That's so right. white people do you got support, creation too. Do you support Black Lives Matter? Well, to support it in what in what way? In like I way. like I think that the you know like saying Black Lives Matter it means that stop killing black people, you know. But as an organization, no, I, I don't I don't I I don't understand all of their politics. I think it's a more political statement that yeah. they wanted to make, and they're maybe using some of the uh, unfortunate things that's happening to certain black people in different Did you neighborhoods. you know that Black Lives Matter was started by a bunch of fat black radical lesbians? No, I who didn't hate know God, that. Who hate God, who hate the I see, I haven't family. even followed that. I, I didn't even know that, but is that true? Uh-huh. You telling fat the truth right now? Fat black radical lesbians. I, 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 I didn't know. Yeah, now that you know, what do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I wish them all the best, and uh, and uh, and I'm hoping that morality and integrity and you nothing... can't be moral if you're a lesbian. <laughs> well, it can people can change. Well, they haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in that racism exists? Uh, I believe racism exists. I do. You believe that there's such thing called racism? I do believe there's a such thing. I notice. As, do you believe white supremacy exists? I believe um, that a whole, the whole. I think as a label, I think there's some white people that feel like they're better than other people. There's some Muslims they feel like they're better than other Muslims. Yeah. There's some blacks they feel like they're better. I think, but to label things, I like to get away from labeling and say, look. Let's identify who this person is that's doing the wrong, and let's let's yeah. let's bring him to the carpet. So when we make blanket statements, it's just not. It doesn't help us progress. That's There's right. no, you know, what I mean, we need to evolve and, and come from up under the the rhetoric. And then I really noticed start that. Expressing. I noticed that at one point in America yeah. and around the world, there was a lot of focus on. Islamic terrorism. Yes. You know, they were blowing up things, killing people. Yes. Um, but all of a sudden, you don't hear about that anymore. All you hear about now is, is so called white supremacists yes. attacks and things. And you don't hear any more about Muslim attacks, <laughs> the uh, radical propaganda attacks. Propaganda because it never why really do you think was. that is? It never really was. But while was. they putting the focus on white people, pretending that white supremacists are now doing all these things. Well, I think they just take turns. It has to be like, it, it's almost something that I, that I learned from what uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan said. You got to follow the money. When the propaganda and the media is telling a, a story and selling this, this, this story to us and all of the news channels, there's something going on behind the scenes as far as money. So perhaps now it's the... It's the Unfortunately, the white supremacist turned and we can leave off the Islamic terrorists. We've done that. They'll come back around. Right? So I think they use the same script. What is a man? A man? Uh -huh. A human being? Like a, 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 a man is a person with uh, self-discipline, morals, integrity, who stands up for himself, for his self-love, and stands up and wants the same thing for everybody else. That's a man. Do you, what is love? Oh, love is unconditional when you want the same for someone else. You feel it and you know it. You, it it's, uh, it's powerful. It's a verb. It's action. So you're able to express it. Keith Ellison uh, is the uh, attorney general, I believe, there. And um, it's been discovered that he hid, uh, kept away the entire video of that George Floyd guy that, was, that died in, uh, mm. in uh, wherever they were. Yeah. Um, he hid that, the real video, now it's out, and George Floyd resisted arrest. He was resisting, he seemed to be high on thing. Is Keith Ellison an evil person for doing that, if that's true? No, I mean, no. He's not evil for hiding I, the real video? Um, I wouldn't say blanket evil, but I would, I would question your motives. But I, I've seen the video, that I've seen that, that long version, even from when they got him out of the car. And I only seen him honestly. He, uh, I don't know where that story come from, but I saw the whole. He said go up he, to I the heard car. him say he hid it. He kept it away because he wanted to use it. 
in the courts or some some kind of lie. Okay. Where normally you put that out. This is what, He's it, not evil for doing that. No, because is listen that a good the thing, thing to do? I I would just question it because everything needs to be based on the intention behind the matter. Yeah, the intention started what he said. That's that's what started. I've been taught. Like so, yeah. what my father taught me. He says, listen, before. You condemn someone, you got to find out what the intention is because everything is about the intention. So people make mistakes and people do some bad stuff, but let's we'll find out, was that your intention? Was do your you know intention Keith to Ellison? do that? I have met him, but I don't He's know He's an evil him. man. Louis Ferris kind of called white people blue-eyed devil. Is that evil? Well, yeah, yeah, of course, that would be evil, but also Minister Louis Farrakhan has grown since then. And so now you, you haven't heard He hasn't Mr. come Louis back Farrakhan. and apologized for saying that. No, but he has recanted and said that he loves, he loves, he has plenty of white people and loves white people and works with white people. It's a far cry from like years and years ago, which I like to see the progression of human beings. So it's time for me to put you on the hot seat. I got to put my guests on the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to, I'm going to heat this up and I need you to answer these questions All right. as quickly as possible. Okay. The hot seat. <laughs> True or false, blue lives matter. <laughs> True. As a Muslim, do you support abortion? Uh, no. Is it, is it okay to have sex out of wedlock? Uh, no. You're doing it. I, I mean, yeah, but it's, you know, people do it, but it's not okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I got you. <laughs> do, do most Muslims love Christians or, or hate Christians? Love. Who have you voted for? I mean, who would you vote for? Biden, Joe Biden. Kanye West or the Great White Hope? <laughs> uh, none of the above. Why not? I don't know none of them. <laughs> you don't know who Kanye is? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know him. Not, I haven't met him. How about Joe Biden? You don't know? Trust, I don't know. I can't trust him. I can't trust people that I don't know. I need to, we need to eat, Do you travel, vote? Uh, uh, sleep. I'll, I'll, I'll vote. I haven't voted because I didn't even. You have never like you. voted? I didn't vote for Obama and I get so much flack. Well, people died for you to vote. And I was like, listen. I believe that the system is like needs to hold recanting. Like you have never matter. voted. I have never voted. Muslims don't vote. Muslims, a lot of Muslims vote. Look, Keith Ellison is Muslim. Uh, he's, but he, yeah, he's, he's, he's not. He's a, Ilhan so is a Muslim too. Would you vote for the Great you, White Hope? Yeah, I don't. I don't know the Great White Hope. Do you know who he is? No, but if you t introduce me and I can get to talking to him, then uh, hey, man, if he's there to Donald serve Trump. the needs of the people, then Donald I'm Trump. down. D Donald Trump is the Great White Hope. Yes. I didn't know that, Jesse. <laughs> is that what you're telling me? Yeah. I didn't know I was a great white hope. Oh, yeah. I didn't know it. <laughs> Would you vote for him this time around? I, I, I'm not. I'm staying out of politics myself. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to say Would you choose to take the Chinese virus vaccination? Uh, vaccine. No, sir. No, you would sir. not take it? No. Uh, Who has more privilege in America, black people or gay people? Well... What? Privilege? Yes. Who has black. more privilege in America, black people or know. gay people? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a nice trick question. Though. Should women submit to their husbands? Uh, no. No? No. Is being a transgender gender a spiritual disorder? <laughs> well, I, would, I would say, hey, man, yeah, you're onto something, spiritually. So is there a spiritual disorder? Yeah, I would agree with this. A spiritual it's a question. Is it a spiritual disorder? Or a, no, maybe it's not a spiritual disorder. Maybe it's a physical disorder because they're changing the outer appearances. But that's due to a that's spiritual a, issue, right? That's definitely to me some spiritual. Maybe I would say that. Maybe so, so it's being a transgender spiritual disorder. Being a, spirit, a transgender, a, that's a, I don't know. What, uh, who causes more divorces, men or women? Oh, I would say men. Men? I would say men, too. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for taking the uh, hot seat, man. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, for seat. sure. I didn't know what the hot seat was. I've never <laughs> seen it, but I was like, yeah, but you got me thinking on this spiritual disorder. <laughs> did you have fun? <laughs> I did have fun. fun. Is there anything you want to promote in a show you got coming up or anything? No, it's just like, you know, from what you said, that, uh, I'm uh, I'm fighting the label thing.
for uh, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. So I got a film called Faithful Neighbors that I'm uh, written and produced and I'm directing it, 2021. Uh, with some nice stars inside of this film to uh, tear down these walls of these l religious labels yeah. and let's be let's be united. N enough hate and uh, we're human beings. We need each other. So we got to get rid of all of this separatism and this black, white, brown, yellow, green. And we'll be like, look, man, if a, for example, if an earthquake was to happen, I wouldn't be like, oh, are you white? I can't help you. I'm like, my something happens to Let me, me that I'm going to help you and make sure that you come would to Would you safety. date a white woman? If, yeah, I haven't had the opportunity, but yeah, it's nothing You would date a that. white woman? Yeah. It's not, you would make a baby with her? I mean, if we married. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for coming, man. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. That was great. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Let me hear from you. Don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, share, ring the bell for notification. Support our merch. We have the best merch. And uh, let me hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you, amazing. man. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have fun? I had fun. I had fun. Too. <laughs> it was amazing. Thank, thank you. you. Next time on The Fallen State. I'm talking to a rapper today. A rapper that graduated from USC. How did you get in USC? By a permanent action? <laughs> I had a 4.3 GPA. What is a man? What is a man? Yeah. What do you mean? What is a man? <laughs> In your song you said white women want black men dead. Is that true? Yes. You also say F the police in that song. You believe that? Yes. <laughs> you don't think you can uplift a community with a no. billion dollars? Uh-uh. Why not? You make them worse. Look at the black people. They've been giving money and free stuff, government programs and money for 60 years, they have only gotten worse because they're not building character. Building character? Yeah. So this is about character? Yeah. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.